Hello and welcome to another Java tutorial. In this video we're going to take a look at a question. And the question is to read a width and height from the keyboard and to print a rectangle on the screen using the asterisk symbol and the size of the rectangle is going to be width by height. So the user will enter in a width, enter in a height and then we're going to print a rectangle on the screen um, using the asterisk symbol of width by height. So for example if the user entered in the number 4 for the width and the number 4 for the height we should see a rectangle on the screen that looks something like that. So um, we'll have four asterisks across by one, two, three, four asterisks down. And then of course in the middle here we have spaces. The, the rectangle isn't solid, it's hollow if you like. Um, there's spaces in the middle of the rectangle. Okay, so what we're going to do to solve this problem is we're going to break it down step by step, write a little bit of code, compile the program, run the program and kind of build up our solution incrementally uh, as we go along. So the first part of the problem is that we need to read in a width and a height from the keyboard. So to do that we're going to use the Java Scanner class. So at the very top of my program I'm going to import java.util.scanner and uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is well I'm going to need some variables to store the width and the height so I'm going to declare some variables first so I'm going to say int uh, width and int h e n g h t height okay so width and height are integers why are they integers well I can't print half an asterisk to the screen so the width and the height are going to have to be whole numbers okay so the next thing that I need to do is I need to prompt the user so I've declared my variables okay done that next thing I need to do is read in the width and the height from the keyboard so I will need to set up the scanner class to do that so set up scanner so to do that I say scanner equals new uh, actually scanner in equals new scanner system dot in okay so that's the scanner setup and I can use that now to read in my integer values from the keyboard so the first thing that I'm gonna do before I read in my values I need to prompt the user and um, because I need to give them a message I need to tell the user what to do so they'll know to enter a number okay so prompt the user so system dot out print uh, and not a print ln just a print and I'm gonna say enter a width okay and then I'm gonna to want to read in the width from the keyboard so I'm gonna say my variable width equals in dot next int so what's that going to do? Well, that's going to read in an integer value from the keyboard and store it in my variable width okay so uh, width equals in dot next now I want to read in a height but it's going to be really very similar lines of code to do that so I'm just going to copy those two lines of code down and I'm going to change them so instead of enter a width it's going to be enter a height h e i g h t and then instead of width equals next int it's going to be my height variable equals in dot next int so when the user types in those values from the keyboard they'll be stored in the width and the height variables okay so what I could do at this point is just to make sure all of that code is working I could just simply output the width and the height so um, I'm just gonna say system dot out dot print ln and I'm gonna say width equals um, my variable width 
I'll copy that line of code down and just say um, height h-e-i-g-h-t and I'll print out my height variable so I'll just test that now at least that's that part of the program done and I know it works so the user can enter in the width and height values and then I'll just print them to the screen to verify that everything's working so far so I'm going to go over to my terminal window and I'll type in Java and I want to compile Java rectangle.java on Java C rectangle.java and then I'll run that so we get a prompt to say enter a width I'll say enter 4 and then enter a height and enter 4 as well and we get some output to say width equals 4 height equals 4 okay so I verified that my program runs so far and I now know that the input is being properly stored in my width and height variables so I can just get rid of those two system outs for the moment because we're not going to need those and we can move on to the main body of the problem which is actually printing the rectangle itself okay so if we go back up to the little example that I've done here you can see that the rectangle is made up of a top a bottom and then the sides of the rectangle um, so the top of the rectangle is really just four asterisks printed in a row so um, if it's a four by four rectangle for the top I just need to print four asterisk symbols and you'll also notice that for the bottom of the rectangle we also just print four asterisk symbols okay so that's pretty easy isn't it I mean well okay four is a small rectangle um, but what about if they typed in a hundred for the width and the height well obviously I'm not going to print 100 individual asterisk symbols so I can use a loop to print the top and the bottom of the rectangle so let's start by printing the top okay so I'm going to use a loop to do that so I'm going to say 4 int i equals 1 and then i less than or equal to okay well what the hell it's going to control this loop well again this is the width of the rectangle so the width of the rectangle is let's say for example 4 so then I need to print 4 asterisks across for the top so it's going to be in my loop i less than or equal to the width and then I'll say i equals i plus 1 okay now um, when I'm using this loop here all I want to do in the loop is actually just print an asterisk so uh, just because the loop body contains a single line of code I don't even really need these brackets here I can actually I can omit these brackets and it will be fine because um, it's just a single line of code in the loop body so I'll just do system dot out dot print um, and I want to print an asterisk symbol okay now when I pr when I'm finished printing the top of the um, rectangle I want to go to the next line okay so after the loop I'm going to need a system dot out dot print ln and I'm not going to print any message to the screen just gonna go to a new line so that's the top now the bottom of the rectangle is exactly the same so I can just copy that code and use it to print the bottom so that's the top and if I just copy that code down and I'll change my little comment to say okay now we're printing the bottom of the rectangle and that's the bottom of the rectangle done so it's just the same code just copy down and repeat it okay we can test this just to see do we print the top and the bottom of the rectangle correctly so I'll save that and again we'll go out to our terminal window and I'll compile the code okay no syntax errors that's good and we'll run it and I'll type in 4 for the width and 4 for the height and hit enter and as you can see we get the top and the bottom of the rectangle printed we get four asterisks across for the top and four asterisk symbols across for the bottom okay so that's the top and the bottom done 
obviously something has to go in the middle we have to print the sides of the rectangle in the middle okay so I'm just gonna put a comment in here to say print the sides okay we'll come back to that in a second well, let's just go back up and have a look at our little example here so okay we've printed the top we've printed the bottom what about the sides okay well how many sides do we need to print how many how many rows essentially make up the sides well we've already printed the top we've already printed the bottom so in this case in a 4x4 four four, there's actually only two middle rows that make up the sides of the rectangle so in this case the amount of rows that we need to print to make the sides up are well it's height minus 2 because we have already printed the top and the bottom that's 2 out of the 4 uh, from the height and the middle two rows of the rectangle are the ones the tricky ones the sides that we need to print with the spaces in the middle okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a loop first of all to print the correct amount of rows so my first loop to print the sides of the rectangle and we're going to use a nested loop to do this so the outer loop is going to be for int j equal to 1 and then I'm going to say j less than or equal to well how many of those middle rows do I need to print well it's going to be height minus 2 because I've already printed the top one and I've already printed the bottom one so I've got two left to print if it was a 4x4 four four. but the same logic will apply to a rectangle of any size okay so height minus 2 and then it'll be j equal to j plus 1 all right now that's the outer loop okay so let's so I'll put a comment in here to remind us that that's the outer loop okay now let's go back up and have a look and see what do we need to do first of all on these kind of middle rows of the rectangle well the first thing we need to do is we need to print the left hand side and that's just an asterisk printed by itself and then we need to create the gap in between the left side and the right side that's so that is going to require us to print a number of spaces so the asterisk is just a simple system dot out dot print to print the asterisk but then the spaces in between is the thing that's going to be variable depending on what size rectangle the user has entered so it's the number of spaces in the middle that are tricky and we're going to use an inner loop to do that so the first thing i need to do inside my loop my outer loop is to print the left hand side of the uh, rectangle and that's just an asterisk so that's going to be system dot out dot print and not a print ln just a print and i'm going to print the left asterisk so this is essentially going to be the i'll put a little comment in here and i'll say left side okay so now um i need to write a loop to print the correct amount of spaces that i need in between the left and the right side so this is going to be the inner loop so i'm going to say for int i equal to one and then it's going to be i less than or equal to well how many spaces do i need well go back up let's go back up and have a look at the example so the width is four one two three four so this first asterisk takes up one of those four and then in the middle i should have two spaces and then one asterisk on this side so it's actually width minus two because an asterisk on that side left side right side leaves two spaces in the middle so that's width minus two for the inner loop so if i go down here and i say i less than or equal to the width minus two and then i'll say i equals i plus one and in this inner loop i only have a single line of code because all i want to do is just print a space so I don't need any brackets for this inner loop. I'll say system.out.print. And again, not a println, just a print, because I want the spaces to go one after the other. And then I'll just print a space. Okay, so I've printed the left-hand side. That's the left-hand side. Okay, 
I could put a little oops, I could put a little comment in here to say um you know spaces in middle. And then finally what I want to do, still in this outer loop, is I want to print the right side. And the right side is going to be just another asterisk. So this is going to be the right side. Okay. Now when I print the right side, if we go back up here to our little sample, um, so print the left side, then print a number of spaces in the middle, and then when we print the right side, we want to print a new line to go down and print the next row of output. So this final asterisk on this side is going to actually be a println because I want to create a new line. So this one, when I print the right side, this one is going to be a println. Okay, so we've kind of broken that problem down. We got the input working first, then we wrote the loop to print the top of the rectangle, and we repeated that to print the bottom of the rectangle. We tested that and saw that that worked, and now we're after writing a nested loop in the middle of those two pieces of code in order to produce the sides of the rectangle. So let's see, does this work? We can compile our code. If there's any errors, we'll fix them come back to them, fix the errors up, and then we'll run the program and test it and make sure that it works. So let's go back over here to uh, the terminal window, clear this off a little bit, and we'll type in java c rectangle.java. Okay, no syntax errors, that's good. And then we'll run the program. Okay, so java rectangle, and enter width, well, let's enter four, enter height, let's enter 4 as well, and hey presto, look, we've got a nice rectangle, so we've got 4 asterisks along the top, 4 asterisk symbols along the bottom, and then we have an asterisk symbol on the left hand side, then we have two spaces in the middle, followed by another asterisk and a println to bring us down to the next line. So the program works, we can run it again and actually see we put in some other numbers what happens so what about if I put in 10 for the width and say maybe 5 for the height well we get another rectangle to the screen so let's count and make sure 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 across and 5 down 1 2 3 4 5 asterisk symbols down so our program works so you could see that we broke that problem down into a number of different pieces to make it easier to solve and that's a very good approach to solving any programming problems that you come across come across try and deconstruct the problem break it down solve little bits as you go along and then kind of put it all together at the end is a really common problem solving ap approach in programming okay so if you found this uh, video useful please hit the like button and um, if you want to see more useful java tutorials then subscribe to my channel and if you want to give me some feedback on the video please leave some leave some comments below and uh, once again thanks for watching